Hello. In this video, we're going to be looking at Affinity Photo's retouching tools and how we can use them to remove unwanted objects and areas from pictures. The world isn't always as tidy as we'd like it to be. Sometimes there's a lot more in the frame than the subject we're trying to photograph. And while a little careful cropping might help, it's often not the answer. That's certainly true of this photograph of a beautiful Norton Commando cafe racer photographed in lovely evening sunlight, but surrounded by some ordinary modern looking bikes and lots of passers-by. You can choose your moment to take a photograph where your subject is more or less clear of other people, but in situations like these you can rarely eliminate them entirely, and you can hardly ask half a dozen owners to come and move their bikes out of the way of your shot. So in this case, we just had to frame the shot as best we could and then worry about how to get rid of the distractions later. In Affinity Photo 2, there are several tools we can use to do this. One of the quickest and most spectacular is the in-painting brush. You paint over the object you want to remove and Affinity Photo uses neighboring areas of the image to fill in the space as if the offending object had never been there at all. So for example, there's the edge of a person just encroaching on the top right hand corner of the frame here. If we use a smallish brush size and try not to stray too far from the edges of this person while we paint over them, we can release the mouse button, wait a moment and see a remarkable transformation. That person has vanished as if they've never been there. Now let's get a little more ambitious. What about the people on the left side of the frame and the front part of another motorcycle there? The result this time is good, but not quite perfect. We've lost the people in the motorcycle, but we've gained a duplicate of the two motorcycles further away, at the top left of the frame. What's happened is that the in-painting tool has used these two motorcycles as a source area for its repair. But there's no reason we shouldn't try the in-painting tool again, this time just on these motorcycles. If we paint over the original bikes and the unwanted duplicate, joining them with the painted line, we get Affinity Photo to repair both areas in one process. It looks like we're getting there, but we've got a reddish blotch and some uh, awkward repeating shapes in the background left over. So now let's switch to the patch tool. This is a very interesting option because you can make a selection around the area you want to repair and then choose the source area used for that repair. In this case, we can just drag a free hand lasso around the area of the background we want to fix. And note that the lasso closes automatically as you drag, so you don't have to go right back to the start. Now you can move the mouse pointer to select the area used for repair and see this previewed live in the patch selection. Or you can drag within the selection to move the source area. To commit to the repair, click on another tool. The patch tool is not the same as cloning because it attempts to match the repair to the tones and the colors you're replacing. This is exactly how the healing brush tool works too. Though here you define the source area before you start painting, just like you do with the clone tool. Here, for example, I'm going to use the uh, healing brush tool just to fix a couple of awkward joins lower down in the background here. Sometimes though, you just want to replace what's there completely, rather than simply covering it up or finding nearby matching areas to fill it. This is where the good old clone tool still proves its worth. Here, for example, there are some patches in the background where we've made repairs with the in-painting brush and the uh, healing brush, but we've got some repeating patterns going on. It is very easy to build up rather obvious repeating patterns with careless repairs. So the trick here is to keep varying the position of the clone source to keep random textures like grass and vegetation looking random. So now we've tried these three retouching tools, the in-painting brush, healing brush and clone brush. Let's see how we get on with a different area. This time, let's remove the black motorcycle in the background on the right hand side. The in-painting brush seems the obvious candidate for this. Well, it has mostly done a good job here, uh, but it has left us with some rather odd repeating patterns in the background, like this double duplication of the motorcycle's mirror. 
We can fix both with some crafty patching. Selecting each rogue mirror in turn with the patch tool and then moving the mouse pointer over to the left side of the image to pick up an uninterrupted area of the background to use for the repair. Remember with the patch tool Affinity Photo will match tones and colours so what you're really looking for is a source area with the right textures and shapes. I can see that after this there's still a little unevenness in the lines and the tones in the right hand side of the image in the background so I'm just going to sort these out with a couple of cloning adjustments. So now what if we get really ambitious and try to remove the building and the sky at the top of the frame so that we've got an uninterrupted background. If we start with the in painting tool again we can see that it does a pretty fair job right away but you don't have to be an editing expert to spot some odd bits of background appearing where they shouldn't and some obvious repeating patterns still going on in the background. The simplest fix at this stage is to switch to the clone tool and use a medium size medium softness brush to take them out. Remembering to keep switching the clone source to avoid building up repeating patterns. After a couple of minutes work our image is finished. We've removed everything around this motorcycle including the skyline in the background and even though we know where we've carried out repairs someone seeing this for the first time would probably be none the wiser. Retouching is an imperfect science. It relies heavily on craft, judgment and a skilled touch. You might try the same set of repairs on an image several times and reach a different result each time, depending on how you painted a mask or used a brush. And we haven't even touched on Affinity Photo 2's other retouching tools in this video. These include the blemish removal tool and its in-depth frequency separation techniques for portraits but we have taken a closer look at the three main tools for cleaning up images and removing unwanted objects. The in-painting brush can often get you most of the way to a great result in one go and can sometimes work just like magic. It's a great tool to try first. The patch tool and healing brush are basically variations on the same tool. These are ideal when you want to replace an object with nearby textures and patterns but at the same time blend them in with the existing colours and tones and it gives you a lot more control over the source area than the in-painting brush. But sometimes it's a classic clone tool that will do the job best, especially with trickier areas. By varying the brush size and softness and constantly switching the clone source to avoid repeating patterns, it's possible to fix problem areas so effectively that even you can't tell where you've been when you come back to the image later. To find out more about Affinity Photo, visit affinity.serif.com. That's it. Thanks for watching.